Great, let's take a look at the third passage that we looked at, which I think was Humanities. It had to do with Shakespeare and Sir Francis Bacon and this controversial thesis that um, was at one point, let's see, a dismiss, but it's gained new ground. Uh, Gross lays out a case for Bacon's authorship, but if I remember correctly, the author didn't really like Gross's explanation and at one point was calling it uh, not persuasive and unfortunately, uh, instead of cogently making their case, um, uh, plays a go spends the last chapters railing against what she calls Shakespeare apologists. So this author does not seem like a big fan of Gross uh, and the general idea is that this is Shakespeare, Bacon, who wrote what and these theses and the fact that they've uh, recently um, come back to life. So let's see. The author's main point in writing this passage is to examine the merits of both sides of a concurrent debate in literature. I don't think so, but I'm going to hold on to it. Remember, examine, review, analyze, lend support to, promote. Um, I don't think the author was promoting anything. Let's see, promote further study of Bacon's alchemical work. That seems, uh, that seems like uh, at, out there. Lend support to a controversial view of Shakespearean authorship. Analyze the position of those referred to as Shakespeare apologists. So this is in there, but that seems like too specific a, a, a point. Review the argument of a new book on the work of Shakespeare. So, the author is reviewing, here is a book that comes out, The Magus and the Bard, and the author intros this concept but spends paragraph two, three, four, and five talking about this book. So this is, looks like a, you know, the author is doing a review of an argument that is in, in a new book on the works of Shakespeare uh, and that seems to cover about the bulk of the paragraphs in this passage so I'm going to go on a limb and pick B. Nice. Very good. So we can see on any of these passages we still haven't read them all. We've read the first and last sentences of each of the paragraphs. On the second time through, we're almost going off of our memory of them because we pulled really small, discrete points from each of the paragraphs instead of trying to understand the whole passage in our head, and that allowed us to accurately answer these questions, and that's all we're going for, is not to be able to memorize the passage, but to just be able to answer the questions. Great, so let's take a look at this science passage. The passage is primarily intended to, so I know I have a main idea question here. Um, we said historically consumers tend to purchase based on good value, but in the last decade, however, it's been more about aesthetic and emotional appeal. They talk about Apple, they talk about Apple charging higher prices that consumers are willing to pay, um, and then the author sort of ends with recent trends show that saving a few dollars by skimping is not worth it, so the author seems in favor of this model. Uh, very good. All we did is circle and note a few words in, the, in each of the parts of the paragraph, and this one's a little bit, this passage is, is a little bit shorter. So, the primary purpose is to compare and contrast different types of PC computers. Um, they only mention Apple, and so they're not talking about different types. Define the concept of emotional appeal. I don't think he defines anything, uh, so we can remove that. That word is not good. Explain the pros and cons of a current marketing trend. I'm going to just hold on to that. I don't remember the cons being discussed, but let's just hold on to it because we certainly were talking about a current marketing trend. How about D? Offer an example of how emotional appeal is important in the current technology market. Certainly offers an example. That would be Apple. Um, and they talk about Apple sort of from here uh, to here um, and why this is important in the current technology market. We'll hold on to that and we're holding on to C. And E, argue in favor of greater regulation. Don't ever um, mention the word regulation, so we're going to uh, eliminate E. So everyone go ahead and take a look at C and D. Type in the chat box which one you think is the answer and why you think it's the answer. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to do that.
Okay, well, I'm, I'm thinking it's D, and the reason is that I don't like this, I don't remember seeing the cons in C, if you remember me mentioning that, and I definitely do see the example, which is Apple Computer. Example is actually a word that a lot of times I'm suspicious of, because the GMAT uh, likes throwing the word example and counterexample around, and unless there is a specific example or counterexample, those answer choices are usually wrong. But in this case, there is an example, so that word is supported. So I'm, I'm thinking that that's a pretty good likely candidate for the answer. Let's give it a try. And we were correct. Great work. Let's go back to what we were talking about. So on main idea passages, um, this is how we identify them. We want to eliminate answer choices that are too specific. And if we work the passage the way we talked about here, we should be able to tackle these main idea questions. If a main idea question isn't the first question that you get when you're handling a um, reading comprehension passage on the GMAT, that's okay. Read the question first, identify what it is, and if it's asking you for specific information in the passage, you still don't need to read the whole thing. You can hunt for that information and find it, and we'll employ that technique in our other reading comprehension classes. So just to reiterate how this course works, it's totally free to watch live each of our sessions. Stacy Blackman will be joining us again in the future to continue her uh, MBA admissions portion of the course. course. Um, and the class is available to download free, download anytime rather uh, for $99 and you can watch all of the uh, recorded episodes as they go up. And we will be updating our course episodes within 24 hours of each showing. So by tomorrow at this time, uh, this class will be available for anyone who has purchased the course to restream or to download. So if you have questions, you can always reach us at support at grocket.com and we can do our best to help you there. Uh, we will be picking our Twitter winner of the week uh, at, on Monday and letting that person know that they want a free uh, GMAT video course subscription. Uh, if you already purchased that and you're the winner, uh, well, we'll give you a free standard membership. And if you've already done that, then we'll give you a discount on the uh, tutoring services that we offer. So for anyone who tweets the uh, class from the little Twitter link that you see on this page, uh, tomorrow at the end of the day, we will be looking at everyone who tweeted those and picking a winner, winner randomly. So if you'd like to win uh, free downloads or a free Grok at GMAT membership, uh, please use the Twitter link there on the page and tweet about the class and you'll be uh, entered into that little uh, random drawing to see who uh, gets free courses. Just to reiterate on questions that we get wrong, we should be keeping a notebook for ourselves and answering these four questions, writing the answers down in, in, in writing, uh, not just doing it in our head. Why is the right answer wrong? Right? Why, is, why did I think it was wrong? Why is the wrong answer wrong? And of course, why did I think it was right? This is a critical part of our review process. And so is doing homework. So today's homework for next Wednesday's class uh, for Grocket Standard members is to accomplish four complete reading comprehension passages, not just the main idea questions, but go ahead and work four complete passages with all the questions that come through them. Practice the reading style. Practice writing down the notes like we were circling the, the, the words on the passages on your scratch pad and work the questions specifically concentrating on the main idea questions uh, and employing the process that we did today. Uh, and over time you'll get faster at managing reading comprehension passages and questions uh, and answering them accurately.